Hello, this is Pastor Dave Stewart of Destiny Preparation Church, welcoming you to the program Road to Destiny and welcome to the fall. We have made it all the way through the summer and uh, what a wonderful summer it was actually. The weather was actually uh, pretty nice around here. Hope that you enjoyed it. I know you're getting back into the mindset of going to school and different jobs and responsibilities. You know, this is a time of year where we really shift from that vacationing time to that mindset of getting our, our hearts and minds back in alignment with the things that we need to do, with things we need to accomplish, with which work that needs to be done. I pray in the midst of that, you'll also take time to make sure that God is a part of that plan, whatever it is that you're going after, whatever next level you're seeking to achieve in your life. Don't forget to make it holistic, spiritual, emotional, and natural. You need to get the whole picket picture. If you just build one side of it and don't deal with the others, you're going to have a problem. You're going to be challenged. So make sure that you're making that time to uh, keep God in your life. Life, to go to church, to be, to receive something, to be sp spiritually educated. And by the way, we've started as well here, our Sunday school back here at Destiny Preparation Church. You can come and join us here on Sunday morning for Sunday school at 10 a.m. before service, which starts at 1130. And also on Wednesday, our midweek Bible study takes place on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. It's preceded by prayer here at the church. If you ever need prayer, you need to be connected, by all means, come and join us at 630 p.m. We gather during that time and it's actually available to call in as well. If you can't get here, but you want to be a part of prayer, you can call in for that prayer on Wednesday or on Saturday mornings as well at the number that's on your screen. Give us a call. Just connect into the conference call and receive a blessing. You can share uh, whatever your prayer request is, and we will join in with you and praying and lifting up and believing that God is going to do something great. So we're back into our regular service routine here and have every, having everybody come together and connect up, and we want to bless you. So I hope that you'll come and be a part of it. By the way, I just want to remind you next weekend is going to be an exciting weekend. Our services are changed next weekend because we're going out in the park. We're going to have a live service out in the park, big full tent, the whole blown thing out at Bianchi Park, which is right up the street from where the church is. The church is on Lyle near Mount Reed and the park is a few blocks up on, uh, on Emerson off of Mount Reed, just on the other side of Mount Reed on Emerson. Well, a lot of people in this area get their driver's license taken or test in that park. And that's where we'll be on Emerson Road. We're gonna have a great time. There. We're gonna have a service. We're gonna have entertainment. We're gonna have food. It's gonna be a full blown out day. So we're starting with our regular service at 1130 and we'll continue on uh, throughout the afternoon. Come and join us. It's gonna be a great, great time at the park. We're coming to that community, Emerson Road. We want you to know we're coming and I pray that you're going to come on out and join us and connect up with us for this special, special Sunday. Now let me take you to the Word of God. This is a sermon that I believe is going to bless you, especially in this time of year, in this mindset. In order to really connect up and be where God would want us to be, there are times when we have to kind of get things together. There are some things we need to throw out and there's some things we need to take on. We need to get ourselves balanced right and this is the right time of year to be thinking about that. You cannot carry everything continuously forward with you. Some things become weights in your life and you have to let them go. So there's some things you have to throw away and there's other things that you're going to need to be able to take on. But you got to throw some stuff away so that you'll be able to take some new stuff on. I pray this blesses you. I hope that you will, will receive this and allow it to touch your life. God bless you. I hope we'll see you this weekend. And if not, not this weekend, we'll see you at the park next week. Many times we try and change ourselves when it comes to salvation from the outside in. You understand what I mean by that? We try and change ourselves from the outside in. In other words, we try and change our behaviors uh, when there are things inside of us that still haven't been changed. We try and learn how to smile right. And, you know, when we come to church, we learn how to, pre how to, how to speak churchies. You know, nowhere else do I know people that talk with thou and these, but in the church, not anymore, right? We give glory to God. Thou hast, we pray, thou Lord hath been good. Yes, he hath. <laughs> Hallelujah. Churchies, giving honor to God. Lord, in the head of my life, y'all know what I'm talking about. We, we learn how to, how, to, how to behave on the outside. We dress a certain way and you know we even try and you know behave certain ways in certain situations but the real change is not the change that happens on the outside the change is what happens on the inside and when the inside is changed correctly it will fuel change to the outside 
You don't have to, to be angry and act, behave angry anymore when anger and bitterness has been taken out of the inside. But as long as you have anger and bitterness on the inside and you're trying to behave like you don't, it's only a matter of time. You understand what I'm saying? Because you, you may be trying to smile about it. I'm trying to be happy. I'm trying to be peaceful. But as long as I'm still burning inside, it's, it's just a matter of time before that breaks out and shows up. And generally when the pressure's on, that's when you find out all that's been sitting in there waiting to come out. But if you change it from the inside, then no matter what happens on the outside, it's not going to change. Your behavior is going to align with what's going on inside. God is into inside change. And so spiritual transition begins on the inside. And this book, I believe, is very well written. And it, even the way it transitions, it transitions from a mindset, an introduction, if you will, of, of spirituality and being connected to spiritual power. And then it begins to show us how that spiritual connection begins to change us. It doesn't just leave us. Sometimes, you know, we like, oh, I got God in me and thank God. And, and we still a little wild on the outside. Amen. You ever see anybody claims to be God and godly, but they just you don't always look that on the outside. I'm not just talking about look it, so act it, behave it, talk it. You know, there's a scripture in the Bible, I believe in James, where it says, you know, out of the mouth, out of your mouth come both, you know, lying and, and truth, good and bad and evil. And this shouldn't be right. Are y'all with me? You know, looking at me like you, know, you don't know or we on the right track, one or the other. <laughs> Amen. Because when 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 you're changed on the inside, it needs to bring about a change on the outside. We don't want to just say, OK, yes, I'm I'm a child of God. Thank God. But still be in the same condition, the same type of behaviors, the same situations that we were before we were saved. We want to be changed. Tell somebody I want to be changed. Like, tell them I need to be changed. Some of us know there's some things that used to be in us that we need to get rid of. Amen? Amen. Any witnesses? Amen. Some things that have been trying to hang on to us that we need to let go of. I want you to understand, this is really where I want to I dig in for a moment today. The, the, the title of this, uh, of this sermon is Throw Off and Put On. Throw Off and Put On. We'll get back to that in a moment, but I want you to understand this, this concept that to be saved is to be changed. Those two things go together. Everybody say to be saved, to be saved. is to be changed. Come on, let's say it like a congregation. To be saved, to be saved. is to be changed. In other words, if you're truly saved, you're going to change. If you're truly allow, allow God to touch you, to move inside of you, to have his way. If you're truly transitioning, then there's going to be some change because I guarantee you in the old you, there was something, at least something that was not like God. Amen. Something. Amen. May have only been a couple things. You know, some of us is kind of good, but <laughs> some of us may be a lot of things. Right. But I guarantee you there was something inside of you, even if you didn't always act on it. There was something inside of you that was not like God. So if you're going to truly be saved, you're going to need to change. There's going to be some change in you. Salvation. The concept of salvation is to be set free from sin and the price due for sin. That's that's what it is to be to be saved. Salvation is to be set free. Thank God the work that Jesus Christ did for us in dying for us and giving his life was to set us free to be delivered from sin and the price paid for sin. Thank God for that. Amen. How many of you are glad to know that you've been set free from sin? How many of you are glad to know you don't have to pay the debt? You don't have to pay the price. Y'all know what the price was, right? The Bible says the wages of sin is what? So thank God I don't have to pay the price. Somebody paid the price for me to be saved is to be set free from the price due for sin. But I want you to understand this, that the objective is not only to have your debt canceled. 
A lot of times we stop there. People try and get under the blood, try and get under Jesus Christ. Thank God he died for me. And he and, and so all this mess I'm doing and going to do <laughs> and about to do. <laughs> thank God. Amen. Because he Jesus paid it all. Right. That becomes our excuse to do whatever we're going to do because the price has been paid. But I want you to understand the objective is not just to cancel the debt. Jesus didn't go through all that just to make you clean. There was a higher purpose, a higher objective in mind. The objective is to be changed from a lesser you to a greater you or a better you. You're supposed to be different. The outcome of what Christ has done for you is for you to become different from what you were. He doesn't just pay a price and say, just keep on going like you're going. Just keep on doing what you're doing. You're supposed to be changed. We need to be changed. The old you needs to go away. The Bible talks in in Romans 6 about the old you. We've got to put away the old me so that we can become the new me. There needs to be a change. You need to move into a life now that is no longer filled or controlled by sin. That's the objective. He had to set you free so that you can live in a situation where you were no longer controlled by it. Prior to what Christ did, you were controlled by your sin. You were controlled. You were obsessed by the things that had a hold of you, the things that drove you, your selfish, sinful nature. It was difficult for you to to, to control it. So sometimes you try to get it under control for a minute. And before you turned around good, you found the oops. It it, it came out again. Why? Because it was still in there. It was just caged up, waiting to get loose, waiting to get free. But thank God for setting us free so that we are no longer bound by that animal of sin that was within us. That's the objective. Tell somebody that's the objective. Say we must be changed. We got to be changed. That's what it's about. Don't just be set free. Be changed. God looks for us to be changed. You know, in the old time church, we used to talk a lot about holiness. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Holiness. We'd hear about holiness every week. Holiness. You got to be holy. You got to be righteous. You got to turn away from your sins. You got to get right with God. Amen. I felt like we were just sinning every week. I don't I didn't know whether it was me or somebody else. I thought I had a good week, but the, here it comes again. Get right. Get right. with Lord have mercy. Amen. We, we've kind of transitioned a little bit because there's understand this. There's more than just getting right. There's more than just living right, doing right. There's more to salvation than just getting coming out of your sin. Amen. But you cannot avoid that issue. You cannot walk away from it. You can, it's not like it no longer exists. You cannot bypass that step. Yes, there is a higher level for us to go. God has more in store for us, more opportunity. Not only are we to be saved and to turn away from from darkness and sin, but there's a there's so much more for us to be able to step into at because we are saved. But that does not mean that you can skip the step of holiness. You can't skip the step of letting go of the things of this world because as you hold on to the things that you used to be and used to be bound to, listen, first of all, they don't want to let go. So if you don't let go of them, they're not letting go of you. Mm, y'all need to hear that. Let me say that like one more time. If you don't let go of it, it's not letting go of you. Uh huh. That wrongfulness, that sinfulness, that evil, that bad attitude, those things, those places you used to go, they're not letting go of you if you don't let go of them. Amen. And if you don't let go of them, they will hinder what God wants to do in your life. Understand this. There is more. There is higher. There is greater. But you can't get there until you first take the step of letting go of those things that are not like you, like him. Anybody with me today? Bible still tells us it's the word is still true in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. It says, follow peace with all men. Listen, and holiness Without which, listen to this, without which no man shall see the Lord. Mm -hmm. 
that 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 that's in the New Testament, by the way. That's that's post Jesus dying. That's post his blood. Yes, he died for you to set you free, but you still need to walk and live in holiness. Understand the purpose was not just to check off your debt and then have you keep going the way you were going. We are supposed to be changed. God is still looking for people that are going to live in accordance with him and his ways. You got to let go of some things. Tell somebody you got to let go of some things. Come on, y'all need to help me today. Somebody needs to hear it. You got to let go of some things, an attitude, let go of some things that you used to do, some places you used to go. Some of the things that you're still involved and engaged in hold you back from being what God wants to make out of you. Listen, you try and take your child and you get them ready to go somewhere nice. You're getting them ready to go to a good occasion and you clean them up and you get them all dressed. And then here you are ready to go and they jump right back in the mud hole with their good clothes on. And you were supposed to be going somewhere. Any parent in here know what I'm talking about? Been there, done that. Amen. Then what do you have to do? Thank you. You have to start all over again. Why? Because I can't take them to that place looking like this. Are y'all with me? You got to clean them up again. You can't go like this. You've got to get cleaned up first before you can go to the party, before you can go to the graduation, before you can go to the next thing, before you can come to church. You've got to be cleaned up first. Your little baby it has a little mess in him and you just don't take him with you wherever you think you're going. You got to stop whatever you're doing, wherever you thought you was going, wherever you were heading. Guess what? You got to stop and what? Clean it up. You can't take it like that. Amen. So if you're going to be what God wants you to be, you cannot skip the step of clean up. Are y'all still with me? You got to get cleaned up. Tell somebody you got to get cleaned up and then tell them this. Tell them you got to stay cleaned up. Mm, in order for God to truly use you. God, why aren't you blessing me? Why isn't the anointing moving in me? Why am I not seeing prophecy? Why am I not seeing you move in my life? Tell them clean up. You got to get cleaned up. Romans chapter six, verse one in the first part of two. This is the New Living Translation. It says, well, then should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more of his wonderful grace? It says, of course not. Of course not. I don't even make any sense. Of course not. We can't continue to do what we used to do and think that God's going to smile on it now because he died for you. Oh, are y'all still with me? Amen. God doesn't, God is not any more okay with the things we do wrong now post Christ than he was with them before Christ. And Christ is not our excuse to keep on doing what we know we should not be doing. It's not our rationale for continuing to do things that are not like Christ. You cannot justify doing ungodly things because of the gift that God has given to you. Amen. You got to let them go. You got to turn them loose. Tell somebody, turn it loose. You might have to shake them a little bit when you say that. Turn it loose. Listen to this. Forgiveness does not mean it's okay. Mm. Forgiveness does not mean it's okay to keep doing what you're doing. Just because God forgives you, just because he loves you, does not mean it's okay what you're doing. Just because you love someone doesn't mean it's okay for them to slap you in the face. You might forgive them for it, but that don't make it okay. That, that's not me saying, okay, just keep doing it. It's all right. Just keep, just keep abusing me. Just keep talking about me. Just keep ridiculing about me. I may forgive you, but that does not mean that what you're doing is okay. God may forgive you, but that doesn't mean he accepts everything then you decide to do. The purpose of getting you saved is for you to become more like him, which means you've got to let go of what you used to be and take on something new. Mm, some of us like the things we used to do. <laughs> some of us like some of the things, some of the places, some of the hangouts, some of the stuff. Some of it felt pretty good. Some of it was pretty enjoyable. Some of it was pretty pleasurable. Some of us like those old friends, those old parties. Some of us like those old things. Am I getting to anybody here today? But if you're going to go and excel where God would have you to go, you cannot move forward if you're still tethered to where you used to be. 
That's why a dog stays in the same place because when you put that chain on them and lock it down in a spot, they may desire to go forward, but they can't go any further than what they're tethered to. You cannot move forward as long as you are tied to the old you. Somebody say, old you, bye-bye. Better say, oh, me, bye bye. <laughs> Listen, we can't be satisfied with what we used to be. That's the whole objective of God coming to save you. He came to change you. You can't be satisfied with the way you came into this thing, with the things that you used to do that were wrong, the things that you used to accept, the things that you used to like. And some of us know there's some things that we used to do that we used to kind of like. Amen. Everything wasn't terrible and torture, some of it was kind of good. Amen. It was in some form or fashion satisfying. It brought some aspect of pleasure. That's why we don't always want to let it go. Sometimes it's not even just the feelings and the stimulus. Sometimes it's the attitude. There's some things about our nasty attitude that we like. Everybody else might not like it, but I don't feel it so bad. If I set them straight, I feel pretty good after I get done. You know, how some people feel guilty about it. Some people like, hey. That was, that was a good one. I was on a roll there. Yeah. Let me write that down. I need to remember that for next time. And another thing. Come on, somebody. You can't be satisfied with what you used to be if you're going to pursue after what Christ wants you to become. There's a new image, there's a new mold, there's a new concept of you that's waiting to be built. And it doesn't look like what you used to be. It looks greater than what you used to be. When God gets through with you, when God gets through with you, there's something that you're going to be that is going to shine like the old you could have never shined. Hmm. But you can't be satisfied. With where he used to be. I want to go back to the book of Ephesians and show you a couple things here. This book is powerful. It talks to us about what we used to be. In Ephesians chapter 2, the New Living Translation, at the second verse, it tells us here. It says, you used to live. So this, some of y'all should remember this. Uh, hopefully it's not too, too memorable. You used to live just like the rest of the world. Full of sin. Obeying Satan. The mighty prince of the power of the air. How many of you know that there were times when you were obeying Satan? You were doing what you know you shouldn't have been doing. And he was telling you and you was into it. Amen. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those, listen, who refuse to obey God. Some of us did things and some of us were in a mindset where your, your priority was not obeying God. Your priority wasn't what God wanted. That's the difference. As a Christian, he becomes our priority. It may not be what I want, but what God wants is what's most important. My priorities have changed. I no longer want to be what I wanted to be. I want to be what God wants me to be. There's a decision, a mindset we're going to get to in a moment that goes to that. You have to make that choice that to be like God is more significant, more important, more valuable, more of a priority than to be what you used to be. It's a decision you got to make and nobody can make it for you. He said, we served him. He was the prince of the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refused to obey God. But notice it said you used to be. He's talking to the Christians here. He said, you used to live just like that. Amen. I hope we can say I used to be. Hmm. I'm not, I used to. Y'all caught that, right? Used to be like that. Verse three says all of us used to live that way. All of us, all of us, all of us. All of us were driven by ourselves. We were driven by our sinful nature. We were driven by our own priorities. We were driven by what worked best for us. We were driven by, by what felt good to us. We were driven by what it means to us. I was the priority. Every child, amen, you see them come up that way. That You wonder why these children are so selfish. You ever notice the children can be a little, they all about what they want. Yeah, mommy, but I don't want that. I don't want to go there. I don't want to come. I don't want to stop. I don't want to quit playing. Amen. You notice that? I, 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 I. It's about what they want. Some of our older children can be a little bit. They still have a little bit of that in them, too. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. Amen. That's the way we those are the ways of being led and driven by evil and by sin. All of us used to live that way. Following the passions and desires of our evil nature. We were born with an evil nature, born with an evil nature. That was what was natural to you. 
The things that you used to do before Christ were natural to you. That's why they felt so good. That's why it felt so normal. That's why it settled so easily in you to do them because it felt natural. Understand this. Everything that feels natural is not of God. Today, there are a lot of people that justify what they do because of how it feels. It feels right to me. It just feels I'm comfortable with it. I'm OK with it. You know, one thing I've learned that if you try anything, you can get comfortable with anything after a while. I, I mean, anything. I mean, I'm talking out there stuff that you think, oh, no, I wouldn't. Listen, you open yourself up to stuff. You look at certain people say, I'd never do that. They're crazy. That would never be me. But you open the door to certain things, you'd be amazed at what you would do. There are many people that are in the stuff, not because they wanted to do it, but because somebody exposed it to them. That's why children get so messed up when somebody exposes them to something that they should not be exposed to. And then all of a sudden it seems natural to them. It, it's because it seems natural, you get confused. But everything that seems natural and right is not what's right and best for you. Are y'all still with me today? So we were born with an evil nature and we were under God's anger just like everyone else. Verse four, but God is so rich in mercy and he loved us so very much that even while we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. This is the purpose of Christ is to cause us to move from our old condition into a new. I used to be like that, but thank God for Jesus Christ who has come to set me free, not just to pay the debt, but so that I will not be bound by what I used to be anymore. I am now able to become something greater. How many of you are excited about becoming something greater? 